Hello. Good evening to everyone. Um, let's talk about the command injection, which is my one of the favorite vulnerable to type. Um, this is Mehmet Ince. Uh, I'm working for the Invictus Cybersecurity and the Intelligence Company, and I've been doing vulnerable to research for many many years. And MDISEC is my you know um, Twitter handler, and the pentest.blog is a web page. Me and my teammates sharing our you know research with the community all over the world okay let's you know just have a look at the what is the command injection so it allows you to execute arbitrary command on the host operating system um through the web application so as you can see in the picture there is a payload which is being sent to the application and application is going to execute operating system command on the host and the payload is being used as a, maybe a parameter as a part of the command and whenever the curl has been executed it's going to take the content from the http response and it is being passed to the sh so successful exploitation of the command injection usually is so dangerous because you are just taking a control of the operating system so that you can go to the post exploitation phase like accessing a different service on the same zone or exfiltrated data etc etc um so the question is why does an application need to execute operating system command in the first place because um we are not doing uh something out of the blue we are just abusing some features in the software so it i believe it's so important to understand why does the application uh, needs to execute operating system command and for the answer you know the reasons i have seen all my life i have a couple of reasons in here um, um by the way I i've been doing a uh, lots of wonderful research on the security solutions so we have a lot of example and also i have a case study today for you to talk about anyways let's go back to the topic so i was working on the um, product from the trend macro web security appliance and there was a feature in the administrator interface and, and that interface was giving a uh, ability to mount a new disk so from the developer perspective if you have to mount a new disk you need to execute a mount command on the linux world and the easiest way to do it executing a you know operating system commands and another another things that i have seen was related to microfocus email security gateway and that product is basically takes all the email and try to find out what's happening and in the email world dkim is a you know important and the software of the product um uh, have a capability to generate a dkim for a domain and in order to do it you are going to execute operating system command and any kind of parameter or some part of that command can be controlled by the attacker we are going to have the command injection uh, another case that i've seen was related to the manage engine application manager which is you know uh, monitoring various different type of you know devices and the softwares uh, so in order to do it you need to access the machine you are going to monitor and the way that, that solution was performing that action was using the domain credential for the validation uh, in order to perform the, the, the domain validation I, I mean the credential validation through the domain world they are just executing a PowerShell script that has been written uh, by the developers so the username and the password or the domain name or the path you know those parameters are taken from the user so basically we can do the command injection and uh, another thing that i've seen actually the backup feature every single product that i've seen in my life has a, that feature and uh, whenever you are dealing with the backup that means you need to take all the configuration from uh, from the, uh, the file system you need to dump the database you know you need to collect all the information and you need to compress them and give it back to the user as a zip file and easiest way to do it writing a custom bash script on the server side and whenever you click the you know the backup the uh, backup the system that bash script is going to be executed and if you manage to control some part of that command you're going to have the command injection so there's a lot of lots of different cases that i've seen but those are the most interesting that i've seen in the last couple of years 
Um, as I said you before, I have a case study for you, and which is the Trunk Macro Interscan Web Security Virtual App Line. So I was doing a vulnerable to research on that product, and I'm going to talk about what I've seen. Um, before diving into the details, you know, whenever I'm doing a vulnerable to research, I, you know, in that case, the administrator interface is written with Java. So um, I'm just finding all the jar files, uh, all the web.xml and the other configuration files, and I copy all of them onto, onto your my main host for the further uh, analysis. Uh, once you have all the jar files, you can just uh, compile them and by using IDEs, you can load those um, the compiled files into the project structure so that you can use the, one of the best feature of the IDEs, which is the finding a function. And just by clicking on that function definition, you can see all the different places that function has been called or vice versa. Whenever you see a function, you just click on it and go to the definition. That capability sounds like, you know, easy, but it is very, very important especially if you are doing a manual code review like I do. Um, when you finish those job, you can, you know, follow the two different approach. So top to bottom or bottom to top. Top to bottom is just like, you know, starting uh, start reading the source code by um, the filters, and then you can go to the controllers and service and repositories model, you know, try to understand uh, what's happening in the, you know, in general. But, uh, if you don't have enough time, you know, uh, when I don't have enough time, actually, I'm just looking for the potential vulnerable function. And in that presentation, we are talking about operating system uh, command executions. And every single programming language has a support for that one, like a shell exec in the PHP, like a, you know, system in the uh, Python, you know get runtime.exec in the Java, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the potential function vulnerabilities for the command injection. So basically you can just look for the existence uh, existence of that function uh, functions in the code base. So whenever you find a sweet, you know, uh, function calls to do exec, um, after that, you can try to find out whether you can reach out that part of the software. And also it is important find out what kind of variables you can take control of. So bottom to top or top to bottom. So let's go back to do our case study. So while I was reading the source code, I have seen that endpoint, which performs a validation on the IP address. If the request is not coming from the local host, it performs validation on the session. I mean, on the user with a uh, level three access, which means the administrator. Um, that is important because there will be an interesting function call at the rest of the function. But um, whenever you find the command injection, you can come back in here and try to find out to bypass those validation and you know checks. So let's keep reading because in the end we are going to bypass that restriction. Um, Rest of the definition, we are seeing it's taking the post data and it parses as a JSON object and it takes the month device key from the JSON object and it performs, you know, escaping in here, some sort of escaping happening in here. As you can see, it escapes the double quotes and the dollar signs because it is one of my favorite attack vector for the uh, command injection, especially when the application performs string. Um, string concatenation with a double cause because whenever you see the whenever you use the dollar sign that means you are going to execute a different command which is important for the exploitation phase and um, backtick and all of those characters has been escaped with a backslash and backslash has been escaped again in here so we have a double escaping problem maybe um after that is valid month device function has been called with the after param which is the only object that we can control in here as you can see through the after param it goes to the is valid month device which means we need to read that function but most importantly we are seeing xaui helper cmd which is going to use the after param variable that we can control What's happening in these valid month devices is there is a very weak blacklisting, you know, and the trimming some white spaces, etc., etc. So bash, bin bash, Python, Perl, uh, 
Python and Perl starting with a space, you know, we can we can bypass that uh, blacklisting during the exploitation. So XUR's helper CMD calls UI helper, which is uh, as which has a SUID with a, with a root user. That means that that command gonna be executed with a root user. And finally, XCMD it executes runtime get runtime exec, which is my favorite favorite function in the Java world. So in order to uh, prove the vulnerability, we just call the slip function with that trick. And as you can see, the slip can be executed in here with a root user. So basically we have the command injection vulnerability. Uh, when the topics come to the exploitation, you know, uh, for me, it is completely two different worlds, finding a vulnerability and uh, going for the exploitation because when topics come to the exploitation, um, there will be, you know, lots of interesting, uh, lots of different cases. Uh, as you can see in here, we have the double code in our Python payload, but double code can't be used, can't be used because it's been escaped in the server side. In order to overcome that problem, I just switch back to the Perl, but I still want to execute my Python dropper. So I'm just implanting my Python um, dropper into the Perl because it's not going to use the double quotes. It's going to use the single code. So we are going to execute Perl, which is our which is going to be our first dropper. Uh, it's going to be executed our Python, which, which is going to be our second stage of the exploitation. And the Python gonna go to the communication with a C2 server and gonna take the rest of the payload. So and when the topics come to the exploitation of command injection, um, your you know your imagination becomes and of course Linux or the Windows operating system knowledge becomes very important. So as I said before, that that vulnerability has been solved. But uh, as you can see in the vulnerability details, authentication is required to exploit that vulnerability. But whenever I find an authenticated command injection, I just go back to the initial phase to find out way to bypass the authentication. So. Um, uh, let's let me play the video. Um, I have implemented the meta split module that one, and as you can see in here, um, I find a way to leak the session uh, uh, active session ID, and by using that session ID, we are going to do uh, mount device endpoint where we have the command injection vulnerability. So uh, we have some sort of combination of the three different vulnerability. Two of them used to bypass the authentication and the third one is the command injection right so um as you can understand it's all about input actually this is not special for the command injection like you know sql injection it is like uh, you know the way you are controlling some part of the sql query and you are just doing the manipulation here so it's same for the command injection as well so, uh, that means the input means literally everything. But, uh, you know, for the command injection, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, the command injection, it doesn't have to be between the request and the response cycle. It can be outside of that request and response cycle. And um, uh, I'm gonna draw the case that I'm thinking in here. Start drawing. Um, there is a, let me, let me log in with a go. But I'm gonna update the data on the server side. Maybe I don't need to log in. Maybe the application team that I just logged in because of that session update on the server side. So, anyways, we have the application in here, and that's the application boundaries. You know, that's the application we have. So, when we are thinking about the input, we are just thinking about the request and the I'm gonna use P for the response request and response. And basically, we have HTTP in here. But as a term, I mean the input means every single data that's come into the application. So that means for me, the data taken from the databases is also input for also um, you now web services or microservices. The data that you are taking from outside of your application means input. It can be like, you know, um, 
Red is it can be the file you are reading from the operating system uh, file system, you know. Every single those kind of data that comes into the application means input for me. So um, when the topics comes to the input validation or the security from the developer perspective, um, they are doing great job in here, but I don't see, you know, input validation on a data taken from the database or the data taken from the web services. So, but for me, you know, um, input means literally every single data that's come into the applications inside. So, um, I have a one interesting uh, case for that scenario, um, microfocus email security app lines. It, it's been like a couple of years, but the software takes the data from the database. As you can see in here, the first column gonna be the domain and the second column gonna be the selector. And, it, and then it performs some, you know, it set function checks uh, over the, over the domain and the selector and we just just jumped to the else part of the if because we are thinking that we are control the data on the database or at least we can find a way to control or change the data on the database so we can jump into the else statement and if you can see in here the system function has been called uh, in order to execute the open the gene key binary which is going to generate a key for the decom of the domain and the selector and the domain has been used in here without you know escaping or input validation etc etc so that means if you find a way to implant our payload into the table that select query is taking the data from we can exploit that vulnerability so um uh, during the exploitation phase, I find the SQL injection and by abusing stack queries, I managed to create a user with the administrator privilege. And then I go to the different user interface where the data is being populated to the table uh, because the, the data in that table is going to be used in here. So basically, we are just triggering insert queries uh, which contains our payload and the data, our payload written to the database and it is being taken by the different part of the application and that part is going to execute the system command with the data that we can control and in the end, as you can see, we have the command injection. So, guys, thank you very much for listening up and uh, thank you very much for the GitHub security team for having me. I just want to talk about my own experience for the zero day hunting and especially for the command injection case. It is um, especially quite popular for the appliance solutions and different perspective uh, can help you out. Maybe, you know, eventually, I hope so to find out the, those kind of vulnerabilities. And thank you very much.